What's up, guys? Today, we're going to talk about something I've already talked about in the past, actually, which hard carries need XP priority in the lane, as you can read right there. We have talked about it. I kept it kind of general, though, um, just a vague category. I wanted to, for this video, go into a bit more specifics, um, certain heroes that always make me think of giving them priority and other times where it's like kind of scenario based. So let's just get into it. Three things you're going to think about. Farming speed, kill threat, survivability. I can read too. Farming speed is what we talked about, where we tried to set a benchmark. If the lane looked really bad, we wanted to get our carry to a certain level so that they can run off to the jungle and farm there instead. And then we also talked about kind of the opposite side of that, where some heroes are just really good at it, like Naga Siren, who even if the lane is good, you actually just want them to hit, say, level 5, so they can go to the jungle and they will farm faster there than if they just stayed in the lane. And sometimes you want them to do a bit of both, but that's not really the topic of this video. Now, the next two that we didn't talk about quite as much is kill threat and survivability. So they're kind of self-explanatory, right? Where some heroes, the stronger they get, they're more likely to kill the enemy offlaner. Everyone, so let's step back a second. Every time your carry levels up, technically all of these go up a little bit. You know, you get some stats, you probably get another skill point in something. To some degree, you always improve your farming speed, your kill threat, and your survivability every time you level up. But what we are thinking about is when there is a significant jump in farming speed, in kill threat, survivability, when they level up. Usually, because it's the early game, this is associated with the skills they have rather than the stats from leveling up. Because, you know, to be honest, the stats, you're getting like six total oftentimes you know maybe three and one one here whatever um yeah it helps but it's not that significant it's usually this like extra 100 damage from your spell or an extra you know illusion whatever uh, these are the significant jumps that we are thinking about survivability again explanate uh self-explanate what am i saying it's self-explanatory where you level up, you get another point in your blink or whatever, it helps you get away. So let's actually just go into some carries now where this stuff holds true. So start with farming speed. We'll trim this down. We'll trim this list down in a bit, but these are just some general examples. So like Alchemist, not usually a carry, I'll admit, but he has gone on and off as a hard carry. And when he has more points in Acid Spray and Grievous Greed, he farms faster because he does more AoE damage and he gets more gold for farming. That's why he is now currently in the middle lane because that's where he can get the levels fastest. So if you do have him as a hard carry, as much as possible, you still want that to apply. You still want him to level up quickly. Now, we're not going to go in as in-depth for all these heroes, but I think you can see the trend. Sven, the, the more points in Cleave. Faster AoE farm. Skeletons and his uh, lifesteal makes it easier to farm. The skeletons make it faster to farm. Drow, more points in multi-shot help her to farm camps a little bit. But really what you're aiming for is her level 6 when she gets the, uh, the potential procs. This is when she can really farm ancients if she wants. Or really just farming anything. This is just a huge step forward. Meepo, more clones. Poof, Medusa, split shot. Naga Siren is the hallmark example. This is why I've used her a lot. Mirror image. The cooldown relative to its duration is quite good. It's not that expensive of a spell for her. And then she has a passive AoE clear, Riptide. So at a very early level, she's able to use her illusions to farm very efficiently. Compare that to Phantom Lancer, who also an illusion-based hero. And if he happens to level up Doppelganger, I've, I've seen um, Phantom Lancers use Doppelganger to farm, but they, it just doesn't last very long, right? Um, relative to the cooldown of this spell, the duration of Doppelganger and their strength is just not very good compared to Naga. And he doesn't really have a passive that all his clones get um, really, uh, and he doesn't even really get illusions, a significant amount of them, until he hits six. This is why Naga is kind of better than Phantom Lancer in that regard, because, you know, she can do it from, like, level 4, level 5. Terrorblade, similar. Conjure Image can create illusions, uh, but it tends to be a little, more, a little more mana expensive for him, because every time he's casting this, 70 mana, he gets one illusion. 
That one illusion lasts longer than Naga's, but for 70 mana, she gets three illusions. Um, and so she just doesn't have to cast that spell as often. And because of that, she's just able to use it more efficiently. Whereas Terrorblade, he can create a lot of illusions, but he doesn't really have a passive to go with them. If he happens to have Metamorphosis going, he is better than Naga, but this is a really long cooldown spell, very short duration relative to it. And then you even have to stay near your illusions, otherwise they lose this. So I think it's pretty obvious why Naga is like the key example in this case. <clears throat> um, let's move to Kill Threat, actually, before we... Yeah, let's move to Kill Threat. Okay, so again, self-explanatory. Chaos Knight. Yes, having another point in Chaos Bolt or Reality Rift, maybe even his passive, this does improve his Kill Threat a bit each time. But really, the big thing is his ultimate, where that's almost... It's like a free kill against so many heroes when he ults, stuns, rifts on top of you, and just like, whack, 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 you're dead. Amber Spirit, very level-based hero. All his spells do way more damage every time you level them up. They drop in cooldown. You know, Bloodseeker, more oppressive, the more points and thirst he has. And then when he finally gets Rupture, anytime he has Rupture up, he is probably looking for a kill. He is a very aggressive hero. We're going to get back to that in a second. Faceless Void. He can go both ways. I put him in the kill threat, but actually Time Walk, if we look at the scaling, 24 seconds can drop all the way down to level uh, to 6 seconds at level 4. What that means is in terms of survive survivability, um, the higher level Void is, the more likely he is to survive because he can just Time Walk things off. Now sometimes if you're really crushing the lane, they'll level up Time Lock instead. And that is when you're kind of more of under the kill threat category, trying to bash the enemy to death. And then, of course, when he hits Chrono, very, it's funny because compared to Bloodseeker, who can probably get a kill on his own with Rupture, or like Chaos Knight, who can probably get a kill on their own with Rupture, Faceless Void is a hero who kind of struggles to get a kill on his own unless he's really far ahead or the enemy is already weak. He just doesn't have enough damage a lot of the time unless he gets like lucky time lock procs um he kind of needs a support to actually help him deal damage in chrono or for the mid laner to rotate in or something so he's in this weird category where his kill threat does jump up but he still needs levels from his support so so for example what if i pushed all my experience to faceless void and he got to level six and i'm like a level two jakiro i have no damage to contribute and even though he's 6, he also does not have very much consistent damage to contribute. And so getting 6 is kind of pointless now, unless someone else rotates in. But what if he gets a delayed 6? You know, it's slower by a minute or two. But instead, now I am level 3 or 4 when he has Chrono. Now I do actually add damage, um, and now a kill is more likely. So splitting that category of heroes who can get solo kills like chaos knight and bloodseeker versus a hero like faceless void who still sort of needs some help to get the kill can be important when deciding you know how much do i prioritize this guy luna when she has her six it's more of a deterrent rather than she's actively looking to kill people but she could be um uh, it's funny sometimes people don't want to actually get the ult at six they would rather start like leveling up other things so that's why it's more of a deterrent. You don't necessarily want to show that you don't have your ultimate. You just want them to be like scared to commit on you. And then you're like, haha, I didn't actually have it. I'm leveling up my glaives or whatever. Um, the high level would be to see that. But, you know, let's not worry about that. Luna. Um, what am I saying? Phantom Assassin. When she hits her six, she gets her ultimate. This is when she can start chipping people down with her dagger. And it really depends on hitting six. One through five. It's really not that scary against a phantom assassin for the most part but when she hits six that's when it can be really scary compare that to ursa who one through five is quite terrifying as he gets more points in fury swipes and now he can like earth shock jump on top of you maybe he gets a point in overpower to get some couple uh quick hits in that is very scary on that build up to six which doesn't necessarily make him more likely to kill you it just makes him more survivable so it does unlock the ability to dive the tower, and it also unlocks the ability to kind of man fight when it looks like you might kill him, but then he ults and you're like, I'm literally doing no damage, and then he kills you 
in that time. But it's not like Phantom Assassin who has to hit six before she's really a kill threat. Veno, he just he just wants levels. Uh, we don't need to go into it. He needs levels in Poison Sting and Plague Wards to be very effective. Visage, whoops. Visage, a hero that depends on their familiars. I would say Visage is like a third of a hero if he doesn't have familiars. Uh, so as soon as this guy can hit six, the better. He is not a very common hard carry right now, but he's done it all. It's uh, one of those things where it kind of changes per patch. Ricky, he can finally go invis and gets a bunch of damage. It just activates the hero a lot. He is kind of going to still sit in lane, but it, you know, if he disappears, it's very scary because you know he's invis. So the enemy team has to be like, is he just jungling? Is he like in my lane right now? Is he watching me? I don't know. Only when he hits six though. Lycan, when he gets a six, free kill. Let's move on. Survivability. Lifestealer. So I want to point out the issue with survivability here. This is the category that is most likely to be hit or miss in your game. So for example, Lifestealer. Very safe with rage in general. Like oftentimes he can just rage and that is enough to get him away. But sometimes it's not. And sometimes he needs infest. So he'll rage and then he'll infest something. He'll run away in this creep that the enemy has to try to kill. And then by the time he pops out again, he's healed a bit. And guess what? He has rage again. Makes it really hard to kill a lifestealer when he has infest. But what if rage is enough? So like we just said, like sometimes he just needs rage. If that's the case, then just forget about needing six for survivability. It just doesn't matter, right? Because he's already covered in the survivability category. Um, and so if that's a game where he can't die like rage is enough you don't have to think about prioritizing his experience um and that kind of applies for all these heroes with survivability um there is some like overlap there there's actually a lot of overlap but don't worry about it right now <laughs> um timber saw you know when he has timber chain and points and reactive armor just very difficult to kill troll warlord when he gets his ult when he can uh apply a mischance to you Usually, yes, it's at level one, so it's really more about the ult. Um, but yeah, because this lasts six seconds, you can leave the lane. If he almost dies, he ults, you teleport in. You still have a couple seconds to get to him before his ult phase. Oh, what's happening? My camera just disconnected for no reason. I'm back. Okay, who's next? Slark. Slark is a really big one. I'm going to get to him in a second. Weaver. Time lapse. Is there much more to say than that? You almost kill him, he time lapses out. Whoa, survivability. Sometimes he doesn't need it. Sometimes he can just run away with Shikuchi, and he just needs a couple levels to make this uh, lower cooldown, and then that is all he needs. So the category that often like, always applies is the farming speed, because every game, the hard carry is going to farm a lot. Isn't that crazy? But some games, you're not able to get kills, depending who is on your team, who's on the enemy team. And some games... You're, you know, more at risk of dying or less at risk of dying. So the farming speed is the one where, like, any hero that falls in this category, you really, like, as much as possible, you tend to want to prioritize their levels. Slark. So what I want to point out here. So I, I broke it into three categories, right? And, of course, to some degree, everyone is in multiple categories. Where Lifestealer, you know, if he gets more points in Feast, he he's faster attack speed. Um... But it's not that much better at farming, you know? It's like, it helps, but it's not like a Naga with illusions and AoE. His ultimate is great for survivability. Can also be a kill threat thing if he is, uh, like, infest bomb someone. But at the same time, usually that's not necessarily what you're looking for. Like, as soon as he hits six, many other people are not six yet, so they, like, aren't a good delivery system for him. And then it's like, I'll infest my support and he'll slowly walk up. It just doesn't work out well. Um, and we're really trying to think about these first five to ten minutes. But sometimes people hit all three. And that is like Slark. This ultimate hits all three, doesn't it? Survivability. He, he becomes untargetable. And so only people like Leshrac, who put out a ton of damage without actually having to target you, can kill him. And also heals him in that time and he moves faster to get away. So it's like, it's so hard to kill him. It is a fantastic escape tool for him. What about kill threat? 
he can now just man fight you. And if he gets close to dying, he pops his ultimate. You can't target him. It's got a strong overlap with survivability here. Um, but it allows him to play super aggressively. And there's just like not much you can do about it unless you're like a, a very specific hero who can who can do something about it. Um, and then farming speed. Dark pack actually hurts Slark. It's a great AoE spell, but he takes a lot of damage. What if there was some ability that healed him? Oh my goodness, Shadow Dance. What? So now he can use Dark Pack to farm, and then he just stands in the trees for a second and heals up. And guess what? He gets increased movement speed as he's running between camps. Slark is a fantastic hero to hit to go for a fast level 6. So we're going to trim this list now, like I said. I'm going to put Slark at the very front because he's like one of the best, and he could go like in the front of this list for all of them. Life Stealer level 6, honestly, doesn't really matter. His 6, who cares? His level's whatever. His level's whatever. It's kind of just Slark, really. Kill Threat. This one's kind of harder, but like, you don't usually play Luna as like looking for kills. She kind of just farms, and like I said, it's kind of a deterrent. It's more like you want Ursa to hit some early levels, so he's scary. Venomancer. These people who become Kill Threats on their own, so you can now leave them in the lane while you go do other things. These are the heroes I tend to prioritize, and especially if they don't need level 6 to do it. So, like, CK needs to hit 6 before he can get a solo kill, which means if I leave the lane and he's only level 4 or 5, the enemy carries are like, the enemy offlaners and the force support, they're like, eh, maybe I can show up. Like, I'm not that scared. But against a, like, a level 5 Ursa, when the offlaner is like 3, they're like, if I walk up, I'm just, like, I'm dying, you know? Um... That makes it really good to get him to that level, and now I can go do other things. Doesn't apply with, like, say, the Phantom Assassin. She is 5, but she doesn't really represent that kill threat until she hits 6. And even then, it's kind of like, you know, will she really 100 to 0 you at level 6? Not if you're not that far behind. Not if you have some kind of stun or escape, you know? She has to get really lucky with a bunch of crits. And, like, usually how it happens is she chips you down by throwing daggers, gets, you know, a lucky crit, and then she might commit. Um, but she needs that process of chipping you down, and so she's not like so scary. So we get rid of her. Visage really needs his familiars. We put him up here. Chaos Knight. Honestly, it's okay to play with Chaos Knight because he can get kills with you. Like a Chaos Knight that's level 4 and you're level 4, that is almost equally as scary as, say, a Chaos Knight that's level 6 and you're level like 3. Um, because he is just a fairly strong hero, even without his ultimate, with the right laning partner. And yes, six does like represent this almost a free kill, but you're still likely to get a kill when he's like three through five. Whereas compare that to PA, who I just got rid of, is a level five PA and like a support really that likely to kill you? Eh, you know, not so much. So we get rid of him. Ember, another hero that really likes levels. This is why any hero that usually plays in the mid lane or can play in the mid lane is probably a carry that you want to prioritize their experience. So like uh, Ember, Bloodseeker, they can both be mids. Lycan can be a mid. Um, Ricky, really nice to get that invis, that extra damage that just gets him going. But honestly, don't really have to prioritize it. Um, if you're just strong with Ricky, that's usually good enough. Kind of the same with uh, CK, that example, where... If we're both, like, if he's five and I'm, like, three, we can probably get kills. I don't really need to wait for him to hit six, so I don't care so much about his, like, prioritizing his XP. Same with Void, where if it's a lane he needs time walk, then I'm going to help him out. So maybe we put him in the survivability category. If it's a lane he needs time walk to survive, I prioritize him. If it's a lane where, like, maybe we can get a kill when he hits six, I don't care about that as much. Usually it's more about, like, the survivability and the farming speed that I like that is my personal priority is like survivability is number one followed by farming and then kill threat but it does kind of change based on the game I know that's confusing but <laughs> I, I don't know farming speed alchemist yeah you got to prioritize it Sven don't really care about maybe it's just because he's bad right now I don't know but I whenever I see Sven I don't feel like I really need to get him sped up that much and i think it's because cleave scales to his auto attack and like even if he hits seven really quickly but he's dirt poor and has no items then his cleave is not that good whereas 
Like if you just babysit him a little more and he gets a lot of gold, even though he has a lower level cleave, he just has like more damage overall. Like it works out. Skeletons um, are just fantastic at farming. So I do try to prioritize his farm a bit, but I'm going to put Drow up here actually, because she's usually the one I'm always thinking about. Actually, I lied. Naga is the number one. Then when then I see Drow and I think, okay, I probably want to try to get her to six as quickly as possible. Honestly, you just don't see Meepo in the safe lane. You don't really see Medusas right now, so let's get rid of them. PL, similar to that Chaos Knight example, where, honestly, he's kind of a decent laner in, um, depending on the right lane. Like, he can be a pretty decent laner, so I don't feel the need to prioritize him that often, unless it's a really bad lane, in which case I'm just trying to get this guy to six. But... That's not what this list is for. Like, anytime your lane is bad, you should be thinking about getting them to a certain level to get them out. Um, that applies, like, even heroes that aren't on this list. Uh, but what this list is specifically more for is, like, the specifics of, uh, oh, it's a decent lane. Do I still want to prioritize them XP? Like, Naga? Yes. Drow? Yes. Wraith King? I would say so. Alk? Yeah. And, like, PL, though... If the lane is going pretty well and I think we can get kills, like I don't need him to hit six to get kills, but it is helpful. Um, so I'm gonna leave him on there, but like just know it's kind of like on the edge of it. Terrorblade. What do I think about Terrorblade? I don't see him very often right now, actually. I would try to prioritize his levels just so his illusions are better um, and his metamorphosis is better, but. I don't put as much emphasis on it as, say, Naga and Drow. Maybe maybe I should be. Maybe I just need to play with more Terror Blades. Thinking about it, it makes sense, too. Um, but yeah, that's it. So these heroes you see right here, I tend to, whenever I see them, I tend to be thinking already about prioritizing their experience. But of course, there are many other carries in the game that you know were removed from that list or were never even on that list, like Gyrocopter, Juggernaut, um, everyone in this game scales, but I just, some are not so much about the gold. So like, let me compare it to anti-mage real quick. Anti-mage level, when he gets his blink at like level two, he's probably safe. You know, what, what need does anti-mage have of having a, you know, a blink that is three seconds lower? Like if he blinks away, he just stays away before going back in. Um, and that is his survivability as long as he has one pointed blink. This helps him farm, yeah. This helps him farm by being a lower cooldown and blinking further, yeah. But he's not really going to farm that fast until he gets Battle Fury. So he's not a level-dependent hero. He's a gold-dependent hero. Same with Spectre. Yes, this helps her farm faster. Technically, could get her kills. Haunt. She could look for opportunistic kills. Sort of helps her survivability, I guess, by like swapping around the illusions. But is she really going to do it? Not really. It's not like a Bloodseeker who hits six and he's like, I want to kill. I want to kill right now and then I'm going to farm until it's back up. And then I'm going to look for another kill. She's kind of like, I'm just going to farm. You know, I think you guys should go for a kill so that I can steal it. And then I'm just going to go back to farming. But like, honestly, if I'm just farming, I'm fine. I don't really need to steal a kill if we're like doing okay. You know, that is Spectre um, compared to these other heroes. Uh, so she's like, once again, this like farming based hero. Lone Druid actually probably should go on the list. Let's let's add him. Um, where would I put him though? I would put him in this other category that kind of represents solo heroes, but is essentially kill threat, where you get him a couple levels on his own and he's just safe. Um, if he has like a level five, or he's level five, he has a level three bear. The offlaner is like level three. The bear roots and he's like, I'm dead. You know, anytime the enemies feel scared for their lives, which I would say is under this kill threat category, that is when you quickly get your carry to that point, and now you can just like leave because the carry is a threat by themselves. And I think you can see that reflected in these heroes, um, whether that's like one through five on Ursa or like when this guy hits six or like this guy hits six, you know? Um, I think that's it. Yeah. Let me know if this video was helpful. If it wasn't, I'll just delete it in shame. Have a good day.